Hello everybody and welcome to this Vichy tutorial. In today's video I will be talking about basically how to install the program, um, how I use it, and some stuff that you need to know to get the program to actually work. In this video I will also be bringing up some of the um, questions that I got when I asked on Instagram what you guys wanted me to talk about in this video. So hopefully all of you who asked a question will get them answered in this video. Um, and if not, feel free to either send me a DM on Instagram or just leave a comment down below and I will try to help you. But I do want to preface this by saying that, one, <laughs> I am not very tech savvy. I don't really know what I'm doing with computers and stuff like that. Um, so if there are too many technical difficulties, I might not be able to help you. I'm so sorry. I really want to. Um, and then two, I also just want to say that I'm still learning this program. I'm still figuring it out. You know, I'm, I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I'm just doing it for fun. And I just hope that I can maybe help some of you that want to try this out. The first thing that I do want to say though, and this was a question that I got, was does it also work well for laptops? And I'm just going to have to say no. Um, but I do know that there are some really strong gaming laptops out there that might be able to run this. I don't know because I don't have one. But I did try to download this onto my normal like Asus, you know, thin laptop. It's it's nothing fancy. And um, it worked. I could install it, but it could not handle the depth of field effects. And I will be talking about this later. And it also gave me like a frame rate of about 10 FPS. So it was basically unplayable as soon as I started adding any effects. So I'm just going to say no, basically. So you need a computer that can handle this depending on of course how your settings are how you know your graphics card is and everything like all of that comes into play and I can't say yes or no for every case but generally I'm just gonna have to say you need a stronger I would say PC probably to run this smoothly or at least if you want to record videos and stuff like that or if you want to play actively with it if you want to just take photos it probably works so this is where you want to start out um, the website that you want to visit is reshade.me and this is the program that we're going to be downloading. So as you can read here, it's a post-processing injector, so basically you can edit your, you know, your video games live as you're playing them. I think it's super fun and I use it all the time when I take photos. So what you want to do is basically just click download, it's going to bring you to the bottom of the page and here you have your download button. Just follow the instructions. It's super simple and straightforward to download. Um, I obviously won't be doing it because I already have it installed. Just place it wherever you want it to be and then I'm going to show you how to set up the game. Here you have the application icon. I have it here on my desktop for easy access. So what you're going to do is just go ahead and double click it and then click here to select the game. So this is what we're going to do. Star Stable doesn't automatically show up so we're going to have to browse for it. What we're going to do is go to Windows, Program Files, then find Star Stable Online. There you go. And now here comes kind of the tricky part. Um, a lot of the older tutorials that I have used myself to download the application is going to tell you to select this as your game. However, we're going to go into Client and then select this as our game instead. This changed a few updates ago. We don't really know why, and apparently it has not changed for everybody. But if you have had problems with it not showing up in game and you have installed it, the old like out of date way. Go into your reshade application, reinstall it, and select this as your game instead. Like I said, not everybody's been affected by this, but those who have, um, do this and it should be working. <laughs> so now we just click open and now it's going to ask you what rendering API it uses. It uses OpenGL, so just select that. So these are all of the effects that we will be using in the game. These are basically just folders with a bunch of effects within them. Um, and these are the ones that are going to show up in the game. So what I'm going to do is just click check all because I want all of them downloaded. And then we're going to click OK. And now it's going to be downloading everything. And there we go. The setup was successful. So as it says now, we can just close the program and then open Star Stable. As you can see, as right away as we started up the game, it's gonna show up this little banner at the top. And uh, as you can see, Reshade is now installed successfully. And here we are. Now, since I've had Reshade installed on this computer before, obviously my effects, my latest effects were showing up. 
However, I'm still going to show you what you're going to be met with. If you haven't used the application before, I would advise you follow this tutorial, but I'm going to go ahead and skip it. When you open up Reshade for the first time, and if you haven't used it, this is what your game is going to look like. It's going to look like it normally does. There are a few things that we need to change before we start messing around with Reshade. We need to go into our settings in the game here, and we are going to make sure that um, our vertical sync and our anti-aliasing is turned off. These need to be turned off for certain effects to work. This is something that people use often, um, which I understand. It makes the game look nice and smooth, but however, we can't use that because if we do, um, some of our effects are not going to show up. So we're going to turn those off. Before you start using effects, I am going to recommend you two things to do. I'm going to say go into your settings, and then this is the first thing you're going to change. Set an effect toggle key. So I usually set Q because it's right by my WASD and I can reach it quickly if I have to turn it off. Um, and this basically just allows you to turn on and off the effects. And the second thing you're going to do is change the input processing. So right now, by default, it's set to block all input when overlay is visible. And this basically means that I can't change anything that's happening in the game. I can, I can click anything on the HUD, like nothing is going to work. But if we change this to block input when cursor is on overlay, nothing's going to happen when I have my mouse on the actual window of reshade. But if I move it to the side, I can still move it around. But these are the two things that I recommend changing. The usual thing that people want to achieve with reshade is usually um, the depth of field. I find that's usually what people ask for. And when people see photos that have been taken with reshade, I find people often ask, oh, how do you blur the background and stuff like that. So there are two effects within um, reshade that I really recommend. So if you want to, you can search for DOF. And here you have a bunch of different DOF effects that are going to show up. I have not tried all of these, um, I will admit, but I will recommend two of them to you. So the first one is Cinematic DOF. So Cinematic DOF is, in my opinion, the easiest to use. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to move my window over here because I prefer having it there. Um, and now we're going to get to the fun part. This is where you're going to be met with the first time you um, open the effect. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to uncheck this. Use mouse driven autofocus because as you can see, um, it focuses wherever I have my mouse. And this is super annoying because you can't take photos because you have to move you know, the cursor over to the camera to take the picture and stuff like that. So we're going to uncheck that. And instead, we're going to be using these two values to change where our focus point is. So this one changes the focal point from left to right. And this one changes it from up to down. So I'm just going to set my cross in the middle here, and we're going to work our way from here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to change this value right here, because this value changes basically how much of everything is in focus. So as you can see, if you drag it super high, not a lot is in focus. And if you drag it super wide, a lot of things are in focus. But you still see that the background is a little bit blurred. So what I do, I always set this to 300, because I want it to be as tight as possible for a like really defined depth of field look. However, what we're going to be changing is this value right here. As you can see, you have some information in the little box here. Basically, the higher the number, the wider the focal point. I usually take pictures uh, around 15 when I use this effect. So something like this. And then I'm going to go down to the blur tweaking. And I personally, I add like max blur everywhere because I like having my pictures really blurry to really define what I'm focusing on. This is totally up to taste. Um, and you do what you ask you please, but this is how I use this effect. And then you can of course change all of these details, but you do that as you please. Remember, before you take your photos, always close the window because it shows up on your photos otherwise. So there you go. This is how I use this effect, cinematic DOF. Super simple to use. I really like it. You can just change your focal point. The second depth of field effect that I'm going to show you is this one, ADOF. This is probably what it's going to look like when you open up the effect for the first time. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the enable autofocus because we want to do this ourselves. So you're going to notice everything becomes blurry now. And that's because our focus depth is set to 0 0.001 and we obviously want it further away. Now this is the first thing that we're going to be changing. We're going to pull it super high to the max to 1 because we want it to be quick when we do this. So now we're going to change the focus depth, manual focus depth. And just pick 
a nice comfortable like where it looks to be in focus so i think about maybe there somewhat we'll change this later as you can see the near blur curve is all the way up and this is handy this curve is handy for um if you want like something in the foreground to be blurry just adjust that value and then the far blur curve is like how much you want to be in focus and how like how far back it starts to focus or go out of focus i should say now we're also going to change how much is going to be in or out of focus and i usually pull it up to like 500 ish now we're going to change and see where do we want it to be focused okay so i look at my character now when is your face in focus but not much else behind her so roughly around there and of course you can change it by adjusting the far blur curve closer it's going to be more out of focus and stuff like that so I would usually set it to about 1.5 maybe. That's usually comfortable for me, but again, this is all taste and how you like to style your photos. But that's basically the basic things that you wanna um, work with. And if you wanna stylize it, you know, you do that. And now we just close the window and then take the photo. Now the preference with um, ADOF for me compared to Cinematic DOF is that the Cinematic DOF has one steady focal point which makes it super hard to use if you try to use it in live mode, like you can't, basically can't use it. As you can see with the, uh, the Adolf or Quintoff um, depth of field is, you know, it's based off of depth. So it doesn't matter what's, you know, it doesn't focus on one particular point, it just focuses on depth. Meaning this is actually like a playable effect. Let me just show you, give you a visual example of the um, cinematic UF. If I set it to the center, like of my horse's height, as soon as something flips in front of the camera, it's gonna cause, you know, all this blanking and the effect is gonna be super unsteady because it focuses on one point. So as soon as that point is out of focus, everything is gonna, you know, the wrong things are gonna be blurry. So that's why I, if you wanna play with depth of field on, I would recommend Quint Off. So this is what my game usually looks like when I play. These are the effects that I have on. Obviously, you know, the light is a little bit dark right now, but um, this is how my game looks like when I play it. Um, and I really like how it looks and I will show you the effects that I use. So the first other effect that I use is MXAO. This effect basically um, adds like super nice shadows to everything. It makes the grass look a little bit wonky because of it, you know, the fact that it's like a flat texture, but um, that doesn't bother me too much. But it's something that I think gives a super nice, like stylized look to it. It gives a lot more depth to the game. The second one that I use and is like a must have for me now um, is this one, FXAA. This one is basically the same as the anti aliasing that we turned off in the normal um, star stable effects or in star stable settings. Sorry. What it does is basically it smooths out all of the edges, as you can see. So it makes everything look nice and stylized and, you know, gets rid of those nasty edges that you otherwise get with, you know, without the anti-aliasing effect. Because like I said before, anti-aliasing is needed to be turned off for certain effects to work, but to make my photos look smooth and my gameplay look smooth, I have this effect on instead and I really, really like it. The second one I have on, which is like a must have when you use um, these two effects, is the HDR. As you can see, it's super, like in my opinion, the game is really dark in general. I really don't like it, but with the HDR, you really able to like, I just, I really like this. And then I use this ambient light, which basically kind of like, yeah, well, it gives you an ambient light depending on what's in the frame. Um, so it's not a huge difference. I use it quite, quite like sparingly, but I really like the effect it gives, especially when you're like in fun scenery with nice lighting. It's, it kind of bleeds out into the image and makes everything look uniform. And I really, really like that. So the last thing I use is I use a little bit of tint, just like the tiniest bit. It just makes my game look a little bit warmer. And I really like it because Star Stable is a pretty cold game. It looks pretty cold. Um, you know, a lot of green, a lot of blue. So I like having this on. And then the last thing I use is I, like I said, I use uh, Adolf for all of my pictures, but I don't play with this on. I never play with depth of field on. I only play with these effects on um, because I find it gets really annoying to play with this on. Now there's an issue with um, all of the 3D based effects. The only way I can explain it, and this is how I've had it explained to me, is that these effects 
that work in like a 3D space. So like the depth of field that measures, you know, it feels like how far away all of this is and how close this is and everything. All those effects are not actually like compatible with an online game, meaning you might encounter a lot of issues when you find yourself amongst other players, which you often do because this is an online game. Yeah. How much they can handle, I find, depends on how strong your computer is. And as you can see, there are only two people and my effects are working just fine. But I will go to Silver Blade where there's usually a lot of attraction by now and I will show you what happens if you try to be around a lot of other people with these effects on. So here we are in Silver Blade, which has been recently updated, so it's like really popular and there's usually a lot of people. I'm um, hoping there are a lot of people so I can showcase what's going on. Because now we're going to open Reshade and we're going to turn off these effects. And as you can see, they start blinking. Um, and this is what happens when there are too many people close to you. And the issue that I ran into, we were talking about laptops earlier in the video. Um, the issue that I ran into was that my laptop couldn't handle, you know, be me being anywhere on the map. Like, I think I found one corner in Dino Valley where I was far enough from people for my depth of field to work, but the rest of it just did not work. So that's why, you know, it can be kind of an issue sometimes um, using these effects. But that's also why, as you might have noticed, I have two keybinds for these two effects. Since I do play with my shadows, the extra shadows on, if I notice they start blinking a lot, I can just turn them off um, so I don't have to watch that. And the last thing that I'm going to show you is just how I go about taking my photos, um, you know, with reshade on. And like I said, I play with the shadows on usually, just toggle them off if there are a lot of people around. But what I do is basically I just set up a shot, whatever I want. Let's go up to the little flower patch up here. At the little flower patch, let's just take a nice photo and just click O to open your uh, photo mode. Set up a nice angle, whatever you want, whatever you might be interested in. I like this. This is a nice um, view here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom all the way out on my scroll wheel on my mouse. I'm going to set up a nice um, angle here. And then I'm going to adjust my field of view to look however I want it to be. Let's see if we can get the castle in here. It's kind of nice. So now I just open reshade. And now I turn off my depth of field. As you can see, now it fit better because everything was kind of out of focus um, when we were looking earlier. So now we've got a nice setup. I really like how this looks. Now I'm going to close the window and I'm just going to take my photo. That's it. That's how easy it is. I really, really like it. I really like using this um, application. It takes a while to get it the hang of, um, you know, there were a bunch of uh, tips and tricks that I definitely haven't figured out yet, but uh, I like it. I really super like it and I love how it makes the game look. Now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. The only thing that I did not answer from my little question box on Instagram was besides showing what effects you're using, maybe explain what the other effects do or are for. And as you might have noticed, there are quite a lot of effects in this application and I quite frankly don't want to, you know, make you guys sit through this whole thing for like three hours. Um, so I've been thinking about maybe doing like a separate video for that. So um, stay tuned for that. Hopefully uh, at one point I'll do that. And if not, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys are going to have super fun with this application and I look forward to seeing all of you guys' photos on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so much.